part, we have a disclosure. Be aware, risk in the market. Normally, we start at 10 o'clock. Uh, we will uh, start a bit early today. It seems like we get in a lot of new signals. For the ones that just join us today, uh, we will uh, tell you or we will show you what to look for. Uh, we have a three automated to trade in here. Uh, the left upper corner, I put it in the blue so the numbers can stick out a little bit more on the YouTube. Uh, the first column is a signal, direction of the signal. Uh, then uh, a re-entry based on a pullback. Here's your numbers. Entry price on a new signal. Target the price. As an example, uh, right now we have a, a new target on the ES, a new entry on the ES, and uh, we just uh, got the new signal on it. And you can see it right there on the market analyzer. Then here we have the PNL. Uh, right now, total PNL based on one contract, one minute every single day, the same. We only use one minute. And the total based on one contract, we have 277 takes, 2248. Not all day long. It's based on the last entry signal only. Again, this is based on the last entry signal. And then uh, we have when the targets hit, like uh, the NASDAQ, you will have, uh, it says on it, target hit. And let me see. We already exit on that trade here with the target hit. Here's your target and the target hit. And actually we went above the target, which based on one contract, we have 138 ticks, 690 in that last entry signal. Uh, the same story here on the Forex, you get uh, the one minute uh, signal, the direction, entry price, target, trailing stop one and trailing stop two. The blue market analyzer here is the scalper. And then uh, at the bottom here, uh, it is the, uh, uh, the ninja trader control. The Ninja Trader, Ninja Trader controller. Uh, those are based on the swing trading, and I always share my uh, favorite chart for the DAX. Whoever trade DAX in the mornings, uh, this is my trade on on the DAX for today, and this is the swing trading. And we will be covering uh, the swing trading scalping, and uh, we cover also uh, the price action. Um, on the on the scalper, we use uh, one minute or 150 takes. Uh, I'm going to put the one minute and 150 takes. So you get to see both of them, the 150 takes and one minute. And those are both of them uh, for... Sorry, I don't have too much room. Uh, now you can see on the DAX, we have on one trade, 5,000. And then uh, NASDAQ 1034 will cover those trades. We'll find out where, where are they and we'll show you those trades on the on the NASDAQ and uh, CL, uh, DAX, all of them. Those are a swing trading and those are right now into the trade. And we will try to get it out right now for you guys. And then uh, we have the clock is 9.50. Normally we start at 10 o'clock. And we'll try to squeeze everything in one screen. I'm having a hard time squeezing everything in one screen. We will do that. Um, poo -poo 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 on the NASDAQ one minute, here is uh, your swing trading based on the NASDAQ one minute. Uh, right now we are on that trade. The trade took it at nine o'clock. And from nine o'clock, we're still on the same trade on the NASDAQ base on one minute. And we can fish the rest of them if you want to. Uh, we have the CL taking the trade uh, base on one minute. This is the swing trading. 
and we are on that trade based on a one minute and uh, on that trade right now we have seven hundred twenty dollars on that trade and we can go on and on we will be covering the swing trading but right now we need to keep our eye on the es uh, nasdaq and down zones and trying to figure out how we gonna um, uh, get uh, some of those uh, traders uh, uh, to 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 find an entry signal uh, for uh, the uh, traders. Uh, the system is very friendly use. None of those system here, uh, here require back testing, forward testing. Most of this uh, automated trades they require optimization. They fail. Uh, when you do the optimization, usually uh, you have a very good results, but then when you put them to work, they don't work. So all those system here, we are taking an over with uh, the adjustment and uh, the trade is coming out of your computer. It's not coming out of uh, our system. It's coming from, from that system on your computer straight to your broker. But uh, we are the ones who is controlling and uh, we we keep adjusting the system if need to be adjusted and we give the traders a break uh, for not sitting and uh, trying to sit for the next six months trying to optimize and they normally uh, based on our experience for the last few years that most of those traders they have failed uh, to optimize uh, a lack of uh, knowledge uh, the market or ninja trader or sometimes also there is a limitation on any platform how much you can optimize and some of the system if you optimize it you ruin it practically you ruin it as an example if you have a two uh, moving averages you cannot optimize this is an example because uh, uh, when you're trying to optimize two moving averages uh, they start getting wider and wider because the system thinks it's getting more money by widening the, the, the moving averages. So not everything can be optimized and sometimes you leave it to guys know what to do and uh, the trader just concentrate on uh, when to trade, when not to trade, when to push breaks and say I'm off this table, I don't want to trade anymore or uh, today is a chop, I should not be trading or today is a good day to trade. Those are the most important things for a trader. If you want to automate trade, he has to look at the market and decide if he's going to dive into this game today or not. Um, this is the biggest problem among the unprofessional traders that uh, they do not comprehend uh, those about uh, market. Um, when it could be traded and when it's not. This is the biggest problem uh, amateur trading face every single day. Um, they look at numbers, they don't look at the uh, uh, market's movement. And this is a disaster. So, um, we will be uh, analyzing today uh, what uh, uh, we will be analyzing uh, today uh, uh what's going on in the market and then uh, we will be telling you when uh, there is a trade or when this market getting a chop in some area you should not be trading it and uh, uh, uh just a second guys uh, do I have photo yeah yeah, yeah. yeah they hear me okay so um um, so uh, we will look at the, we have a lot of runs on the uh, CL NASDAQ and uh, we have uh, ES as well. Uh, let's go back and look at the NASDAQ one minute. And now we are on this NASDAQ trade 1,500. If we want to analyze what's going on on this NASDAQ, I usually uh, take an empty chart with uh, our FIBS and, um, and um, 
you know, guys, just a second because I'm I'm getting hammered with the all kind of different messages. So I need to log off the messages. It is very hard to concentrate on three different automated trade and a chat with everyone. Uh, so uh, let me show you how I examine the market. I, I usually take a clean chart like this one here. And I, I don't even color the the now what is that uh, I don't even color the the chart and then what I would do I just examine uh, the level uh, and I look at the one minute and I can get a very clean picture where I can take a trade I don't need all those indicators or all the whatnots to know where I need to trade, but that is not, does not come overnight. So right now I can see exactly what's going on in the NASDAQ. The, the true story is not in the Renko bar when you want to try to examine what's going on in this uh, market, uh, neither range with all the respect to the range, because there is a lot of professional traders use range and it is a uh, very good uh, to, uh, to use the range uh, but uh, it takes as well but for me one three and five minutes those are the true story so immediately i can spot a trade right now being going and on this breakout coming to this level here seven five eight seventy five this is a very good tradable uh, market to short out the market on the Nasdaq at uh, 58.25. Uh, and this is, I'm talking about manual. If you wanted to interested in it, you want to follow me on a sim with it, uh, you can get uh, a trade on the 58 level or 57.50 level and a short trade on that. One of the things also you can examine what's going on on the Nasdaq. Uh, the Nasdaq, already hit the target and this is another clean picture what's going on on the Nasdaq already hit the target so there is not much to do those two yellow lines in here indicate that there is no more long trade those two yellow lines and we have the same two yellow lines at the bottom indicate there is no more short trades those are not overbought oversold indicators those are total different and they are nine out of 10 ac accurate. Ac there is nothing in this business, uh, hundred percent, but eight or 9%, they hit it, you know? And then what I do usually also, I look at the uh, reversal on the Renko bar because I use the Renko bars for reversal. And then I can pinpoint uh, the exact tick to take a trade on the NASDAQ. And on those trades here, <coughs> do not underestimate those trades here because what you are doing you're taking the market from all the way to the top to the bottom this is an es let me see on the nasdaq so as an example on this one here on this uh, nasdaq right now uh, there is a very good uh, trade from 58 level all the way down to the 36 this is this is the trade for today for the guys keep stay a little bit close on this one here one second don't don't do anything right now don't do anything don't do anything wait wait till this bar close all this bubbles don't do not uh, don't do anything and then once this bar close put the sell order right there now you can put the seven uh, six five eight because what you we're looking at right now this is how if you not sure how to do that this is the way you need to do it the reason is uh all this is noises and it's not acceptable anywhere above those two yellow lines it's no longer acceptable uh, to take a long trade anymore to look if you want to pinpoint uh what's going on on the nasdaq 
I'm, I'm showing you some manual and auto weighted to trade in. Uh, if we are looking here on the uh, on the uh, six two Renko bar, uh, that it is a way out of the band and look is immediately telling you there is a reversal, R four warn and take a profit. So being out of the uh, the uh, the the band and there is nothing anymore driving that uh, uh, Nasdaq. Uh, that means it is going to be. Uh, uh, this is going to be uh, a drop down very soon on on the trade. We have the we have the ES trade um, right now. I'm gonna take it a little bit off on the ES. Uh, CL, uh, we are still on that trade, and uh, right now we have 300, 400 ticks, uh, 19 ticks on the ES. The ES started when we started this webinar. Uh, NASDAQ 210 ticks now is over for the NASDAQ. There is no more trade on the NASDAQ. 27 ticks on the YM. Uh, here is the YM at uh, 27 ticks. The target on the YM is at uh, 26,504. Uh, I'm going to take it a little bit higher to see what will happen to the ES. So there is nothing, nothing anymore. The ES hit the target and we are into the yellow area here. So I will not, if you are not on a trade with the ES, you should not be taking any more trades. It's finished, it's over. Uh, the target is uh, 29.25, and this is it. Um, it can go one bar above or below, but uh, this is this is where uh, the ES destination is at 29.25. It can go one bar above or below, but it is over for to trade in long with the ES is over. Also, trading long with the NASDAQ is over. And uh, once we hit the target on the NASDAQ, we're going to see uh, something different. The market, it is, will be reversible. So right now we have, Okay, we uh, the ES missed uh, the target by two ticks. That's very fine. But uh, it's over on the ES. There is no more long trade on the ES. NASDAQ, we still, uh, uh, YM, we have those double resistant. But uh, it's not going to go anywhere above the 26,504, that's for sure. Uh, CL start changing momentum. No, still okay. But uh, the CL has already hit the target 7109. So I put it here to see if there's any potential to go drop to the 7148. But the CL has already hit the target and we can see it on your market analyzer. The CL has hit the target. So actually we are waiting for a new signal and um, right on the spot with the, the ES. And now the ES is pulling back to the take. So this is the area where you should not be taking long anymore. This is where you will be losing money if you are thinking about taking long and short should be in order. Reversal should be in order. Um, YM is a jammed middle of the way because of this double resistant. We'll see what will happen for the YM. NASDAQ is over, guys. You just sit down and wait on the NASDAQ and it's gonna drop down again. There is no more long trade on the NASDAQ, that's for sure. This little spike has changed the whole thing on the NASDAQ, but uh, the NASDAQ, it will be down. And we will see how the NASDAQ start losing momentum on this one here. If we see 
Uh, the NASDAQ, we have the reversal. It's running out of steam. And um, this is a really critical area to take long on the NASDAQ. It's extremely critical area. So it's not tradable long. You should be thinking short on the on the NASDAQ. If we look at the NASDAQ right now, we had a reversal here. They they played with it all the way to the top. Fine. They got the traders lost with it. But now the NASDAQ is, is start losing momentum. And now we are into the, the drop. It was supposed to be a really a good entry here, but then a little bubble here, and then now start losing uh, trade. And this is where you can see on the trend exhaustion, your double MAC, and everything comes in with the R7. And this is one line, and it is a reversal. Fine, fair enough. So it is the the Nasdaq is a dead uh, the trend to the long side, and now it's gonna just misguide you on those movement. You should not be taking any more long trades on the Nasdaq, and uh, we will wait till this Nasdaq come down a bit. And we'll see what we'll we'll do with it. Uh, uh, on the on the automatic swing trade in the Nasdaq is still has not closed that trade, and. On the five minutes, the DAX is still on the same trade all day long. This is your DAX five minutes. It's still on the same trade all morning and has not closed. This is a very serious trade. So, This is amazing. I mean, for me, if this is an automated trade, is is the one who's deciding to take a close position. For me, I will not mess with the Nasdaq to the long side anymore. This is this is the difference between a human and um, if you are in a trend, you are already in a trade. That's very fine. But should I go in into the NASDAQ right now? I must be mad to, to go in to trade on the NASDAQ long because it's, uh, those now, whatever we are looking at, these bubbles coming out of the NASDAQ, it's become irrelevant to the trade, and this is not your area to trade it. And this is where most of the traders start making mistakes, actually. Uh, there is certain area you should not mess with and um, on in this market here right now we have on the Nasdaq it's been given as a warning sign. I never trade the Renko with a trend. I use the Renko for reversals only. This is the first sign. And then we have the R7. Then the market to drop. Then come back. Followed by diversion. And now we have a sell signal. And this is it. The market is coming down to the 66150. This is where uh, the market is going. Uh, we examine it, but now the destination on that NASDAQ is 66150. This is where it's coming down to. And then we deal with it when we, it gets there to see how uh thanks it's gonna i'm gonna keep my eye on it he asks, uh the story is over we hit the target right on the spot 
And now we are pulling back to this area here. You can see it on the system. Uh, the pullback re-entry is 29.19.25. And uh, this is exactly what it says here, the safe entry. You can see it. This is a pullback re-entry. That auto trade does not keep taking a trades. We take a trade on the way up. And then it's going to give us a new signal when we have a short. Then if the market decided to go up again, then we have a new signal on the long. But you're not going to have two signals going long at the same time. You only have one signal, one entry, when the market want to trend up. And then when the market goes down, you will have a new signal. The reason for that, when the market goes sideways, most of the traders do not comprehend it. And this is where you start losing money, even if you are auto trading, when you dive into a chop market, this is where you auto trade start losing money. So this is how things work. When the market is um, getting sideways, this is where everybody starts losing money. Uh, this is your NASDAQ. We are going straight to that level 60.25, right on the spot. And uh, we will take it from there. Once it gets here, we will we'll take it from there. But this is the direction for the NASDAQ right now is 60.50. Final destination for that uh, NASDAQ. So we will look at it and examine it when it gets there. I think the CL is, died on us. Let me see. The CL, after it hits the target, nothing has happened. Uh, so I think the party is over on the NASDAQ, on the uh, CL, we will see. So what we are looking for, actually, guys, we are looking for a new signal. Uh, right now we are, we are 238 ticks based on the last entry signal. And uh, we have uh, the scalpers are struggling. Uh, the one minute scalping is really struggling. Also, the Forex is struggling. So, there's a little bit the um, side market right now. And uh, you should not be taking a long trade on, on the ES. You are at the very, most of you are an ES traders. Uh, you should not be taking any more trade on the ES uh, long because long right now on the ES is a high critical area to trade. So you should not be uh, taking any more long trade. Uh, otherwise, um, eight out of 10, your trade is going to be uh, a losing trade. This is a very high risk uh, entry on the ES. Of course, sometimes you can take those trades here on the high risk and then make it 10 ticks, 15 ticks. But this is a critical area to take uh, trade long on the ES right now. So you should take your hands off trading long on the ES. And absolutely, you don't have any option uh, to take a long trade on the NASDAQ. Uh, what we are, uh, leave the NASDAQ alone. We should not be taking any trades on the NASDAQ. I'm going to be canceling this right now and uh, look at this market to see what uh, will come out to the market after this uh, rally a little bit uh, did not do anything it's just sitting and not moving so we don't want it to jump into something we don't want it so the market is a bit dying on us right now so we're gonna stay on the side and then uh, we will be uh, trying to see if we can find anything to trade and then we uh, we 
we call it for you if you want to. You know, it is a very, very straightforward. Once you hit the target on those charts, you got to be careful not to go long. That is going to cut off a lot of uh, trades, bad trades on the, from your side. Um, I would not touch this ES long at all, you know. Whoever followed us on the when we first started the webinar on this entry, it was very flat when we started uh, this webinar today. Uh, it's okay to stay on that trade, but for a guy come in right now when I trade the the, the ES, uh, I would not advise you to do anything on it. So we're gonna be sitting on the side a little bit, and. Uh, it's going probably going back to test the 2925 fair enough but um, you cannot it's too late to take a long trade uh, on the es right now it's very late <sighs> Right now we have on the market analyzer on the top you can see we have 286 ticks and um, you can see how the ES is going to drive you crazy. So we're not touching it. You see how this ES now going back and forth and now this market every time trying to get up goes back down that it is very unpleasant for a guy is trading the minute he taken a trade this market gonna go against him then he takes another trade then the market is good this is where really uh, most of the traders fell into those traps and 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 uh, they start losing money because they are not looking at the bigger picture that ES is done for now for now it is done you know so and um, you can see those targets and the entry price and the trailing stop based on the FIBS is a splitting your chart in three pieces once this market is hitting the target or around the target you're done you're finished it tells you is done so we know uh, we are cutting that chart in pieces in three pieces anything below this entry level is short anything above as long as this ES still above this all this mess in here it is long we're not thinking short the only time you think short is when you wanted to short out the market and on a reversal like what we are trying to find on the NASDAQ as an example, this one here. I caught it, it was over from here, but then they went and spiked it all the way up here, fine. I couldn't handle it, dropped, then try again, dropped. And now you can see those levels start getting lower and lower, and that it is where you should not be messing anymore with the NASDAQ, only short because it is out of the band. A lot of sign is telling you, I'm running out of steam right there. It's finished. Look, it's running down. So can we afford to take a short trade? The probability 74.50 it will be very genuine trade 7450 let me see if there's anything here the problem is Once you see the start, this is an entry. 
This is signal entry, short. We have an auto trade for that, as a matter of fact. But it is a very small trade. It's not going to go that far. It's a very small trade. It's a scalping trade. It's not swing trading. So this is, can drive us crazy trying to pick up a trade between those two, three lines. It is very hard when the market flat out like this or start struggling, keep moving forward. Uh, this is where most of the traders start losing money, actually. NASDAQ is uh, losing momentum and uh, YM giving up all his trades. And now we have the ES is losing momentum. So that's why I strongly advise not to take a long trade on the ES is to start running out of steam. And um, there is nothing we can do on that ES, NASDAQ, and Dow Zones right now. There is nothing we can do. All what you're going to have bump into a lot of bad trades, actually. So hands off the trading. If you have an auto trade, whether it's ours or not, strongly advise you to cool off a little bit uh, with your auto trading. And... Um, uh, let's wait to see how this market uh, wanted to, uh, to be. It's not, there is no direction right now. So this is where the time you need to wait a little bit so we can go for another round. It is a very simple, straightforward. I can see there is a trade on the... Um, uh, NASDAQ, and I'm not going to be calling it because it's a very small trade. This is a pullback re-entry at the 64.25, but it's not going to last forever, so I'm not calling that trade. Um, once we break this chart in three pieces, you will have a clear vision where you need to stop trading. I mean, this is the auto trade is taking those trades. We have a new signal on the DAX. You can see the new signal on the DAX. It says on it buy. Uh, the entry price is 413.5, uh, target 435. But um, for me personally, I would not to trade the, uh, the, uh, the DAX at 1024 Eastern time. If you wanted to uh, trade the DAX, is supposed to be in Deutschland time in Frankfurt, where you know you have to get up around four o'clock in the morning Eastern time uh, to trade the DAX. But I would not to trade the DAX during the, the U.S. session. Okay, we are sitting on the side. We don't want to get in trouble. We are waiting for a new signal. Uh, this is uh, the first round this morning. On the, I don't have them all. I have them only on the NASDAQ and on YM and a CL and an ES. Uh, so those are the first round in the morning. And we're still on that trade on the ES. This is the ES trade. Here it says 500 and here it says 500. So this is the first round. And uh, now we are waiting on the second round. Uh, once we see the market turn around because you cannot trade those markets and those level absolutely you cannot neither auto trading guys neither auto trading maybe the auto trade scalping is gonna make 10 ticks here and there i'm not gonna argue with that uh, and um I have uh, the swing trade and it's not even a closing position is staying on that trade. I'm not going to argue with that either. But this, those trades are 
from an earlier time. So if we are If I need to come in right now and trade the the uh, the uh, the Nasdaq, it's not tradable. But for whoever caught this Nasdaq earlier time, he's having a ball. But uh, to go ahead and um, enter the market right now, it is crazy, absolutely crazy. You cannot enter the market right now. Very simple. Uh, on the ES, when we first started uh, this webinar this morning, the ES was flat on that entry. And uh, we we went up with it. That's very fine. But should I take a trade right now on the ES? No, it's very light. Very late to take any trade on any of them. NASDAQ, Dow Jones. Why am it's very late to enter the market right now? In order for you not to sit down all day long and you are really wanted to get it over with and take some trades, then you need to st to start looking for reversals trade. And we have one coming up probably very soon. I'll keep my eye. I don't want to call the trade ahead of time. I will keep my eye on it at seventy four fifty. And then uh, we'll let you know if this one is genuine or not. Here is your YM. It's shooting straight to the target. And uh, the target is 507, but uh, good luck with that. So right now we are on hold and uh, there is no trade. What is the CL? Let me see. Oh, here it is. Okay, it might, it looked like we might gonna have a new uh, entry on the CL, that's good. Because uh, ES, we have, okay, we have a new entry on new signal on the uh, CL. Uh, is uh, entry price 7206, uh, target 7234, new signal on the CL guys, 7206, exit at 7234. So this is what is nice about it. When there is no trace on the other instruments, you can always find an entry uh, on a different instruments. So this is the latest signal, uh, 70206 as an entry and an exit at uh, 7234. Uh, we have a new signal on the Russell, sell, sell, okay. Sell uh, entry on the Russell is um, uh, 6957, uh, target is uh, 6898. I'm not a Russell trader. Uh, I'm, um, before I was, but uh, I have not touched the Russell in the last three years. So, um, so if you want to follow those trades, guys, you follow it on a sim. Uh, on your uh, CL, you are already up five ticks on the CL new entry. Seven takes on the latest entry on the CL. Look at the Nasdaq is dying. You see, so from that breakout on the Nasdaq from ten o three, from ten o three, and now is ten thirty one. 
what did you miss on the Nasdaq? How was your auto trade? I'm sure, I, I mean, we don't collect any numbers or names. Any guy, his auto trade took a trade here. Whatever that auto trade he's using, he lost money here. He lost money because uh, the Nasdaq is sitting on hold flat. There is nothing. So you have not missed anything on the Nasdaq at all. So that's how it is. ES, too late to, to enter an ES. ES, uh, YM, there is a potential uh, reversal on the YM, but this is it. There is not much. So, Uh, the scalpers are struggling today. Look at this. The, uh, I mean, even yesterday they were doing much better. Today there is some losses on the scalpers. Welcome to trading. We show everything. We don't hide anything. Now, today, uh, yesterday, if you look at the video yesterday, we had a, a Fed stock yesterday. They were doing much better than today. And today they are just eating banana. And uh, welcome to trading. There is nothing we can do. On the other hand, if we look at the DAX trade, we're still on the same trade, and there are two charts up to six, seven thousand. Okay, now the one minute NASDAQ is done. This is the one we were watching. And this is a one minute, not some kind of weird looking chart and already hit the target on the swing trading and this one here is an honest one minute none of those hypocrite one minute and this is uh, 1720 and this is uh, done with the nasdaq uh for the dax yeah. I'm sure we had some traders using the three minutes or the five minutes this morning in Europe. So this is 6,967 on that trade. Amazing. Also, the ES one minute on the last trade, I took it around. The swing trade and should be started around 9.30, 9.30 Eastern time. Not unless if you want to get up in the morning for the DEX trade, and then you can chase the CL uh, and uh, the, uh, the DEX. But for the guys in the US or the ones are trading the um, U.S. market, you should not be turning on your uh, swing trading before uh, 9 o'clock. 9 o'clock Eastern time, because we need this high time, and whatever you can get out of it, you can. If you want to trade the, the, the DAX, then you, you better start getting up early in the morning. So this one here, we had a small trade, irrelevant, because the market was not moving. And uh, this is uh, the, the trade was taken at 9.49 and we are $700 in that trade. And this is a genuine one minute. One on, it's not one of those, whatever they call it, line kinky bar, whatever the hell the name is it. You cannot even see the trend in it. So this is an honest one minute, not one of those the ones they tweak. Uh, so... Whoever took that NASDAQ earlier today, he's a happy man. This is almost a thousand dollar on that trade on the, yeah, we cannot win it all. And I'm not on it. I'm not, I'm not on the trade on the NASDAQ. I am not, I'm not. 
so I was exit on that long time ago so I'm not on that trade either um, 300 ticks two thousand dollar and um, the AS seems like he is wanted to come into that target 2927 if you are on that trade in any of our customer is on that trade uh, exit at uh, 27 or exit here and get it over with this is a good money you should not be greedy today the market is really a bit sloppy so Okay, guys, uh, if you are on an ES trade, get out of that trade. It's finished. Anything else we have? I'm trying to find something to chew on. Nothing. Okay, guys, I'm going to go for a fresh coffee and then... Uh, uh, we'll continue. We're really struggling market today. There is a buyer, so we are about to hit the 29, uh, 28 on the ES. I'm hoping to go higher, but I'm not sure. So the day, the target is um, 29, 28 and is over actually. All right, be right back. Thank you.
Nothing can be done, guys. We gotta wait. Nothing can be done. We are waiting. Nothing can be done. There is no magic. It's gonna move this market, not unless if we have some kind of breaking news, but there is nothing gonna um, help us move this market at the moment. And the target on the ES 29, 28, 75, and call it off. Then we need to find a new signal or a, a re entry, a re entry point. There is nothing left. An ES on the automated trade, swing trading. It hit 900, it's gonna hit the thousand. This is it. There is nothing. Uh, for our uh, traders, if it's uh, any of our traders um, there, um, if you have a question about trading or about any of this chart, you're very welcome to chat with me and uh, we will, uh, uh, about the trading guys, not about tomorrow or um, what do you think or, you know, just about uh, the trading right now. Uh, if you have anything you would like me to uh, explain, I will be more than glad to explain. Uh, but um, a change in machine uh, licenses and all this, please leave it for later on. Thank you. <laughs> okay, thank you. Uh, somebody sent me a message, said, uh, you sound like you need a coffee. Yes, I'm beat. <laughs> thank you. Okay, we have one guy the, the
he did go on uh, a live trade and uh, he nailed all four of them this is very nice uh i don't know when he started he started it seems like he started around nine o'clock he hit live 575 so he has the target on 500 because when you are using the auto trade even if your daily target 500 if the last trade is uh, uh, is coming to your favor, it's gonna stay on that trade. Uh, thank you, thank you, Fernando. And um, it looked like this guy. He had the daily target five hundred. He nailed five seventy five on this one here. Three trades on the Nasdaq five thirty five. CL six forty. He's using the B scalper, okay. And then uh, he nailed 645. So on the YM, he hit 145 takes more. That's good, Fernando. Very nice. And um, you start uh, getting. Uh, Robert, I don't have a problem with the sound. I don't know if you have a problem with the sound, Robert. Can you hear me, Roberto, on... Um, <coughs> Robert, uh, Robert, can you hear me on them? I don't know, but I, I'm sure I don't have a sound problem. David, uh, let's see, how do you stop along on an auto? Okay, very fair enough. Uh, David, if you are using the scalper or you are using the swing trading, all of them have a, a button on the top you can say close position, okay? Then, then you can close the position. If you don't want, like right now, the, the system, now the, the, the market is not moving. You don't want your auto trade to take a trade right now. You want it to hold on a little bit on the trade. And as long as this uh, auto trade is not in a trade, you can put pause. You can pause the the auto trade and not take any trade. I have one guy uh, from a different country. His auto trade was working, like now on a trade, and you know what he did. He posed the auto trade and got out of the house. You do not post the auto trade if you are in a trade and get out of the house. Then he called me and he said, Sam, what's wrong with your system? I said, what's wrong with my system? He said, I posed the, the auto trade and then uh, and uh, it kept going uh, on that trade. If you are posing the uh, the, the the auto trade and you are in a trade he thought by clicking that this one here his broker is gonna hold position for him at the 2675 as an example your broker has nothing to do with your posing if you uh, you cannot use this button if you are in that trade you have to wait till the auto trade is a flat or you flat flatten everything, and then you can post the, the, the auto trade so it will not take any new trade. But do not, like what this guy did, he was in a, a big trade like this one here, 
and he clicked on here and he thought now the auto trade is going to hold his position till he gets back. I don't know why would he think that because the broker care less, you know, and the broker cannot hold your position in here. Sometimes we get some weird, mysterious way. I don't know how to sort it out. So you can close it on, on the David on the, the swing trade in here, the price action. You can close it manually and make sure by taking those, or you can go to your PL here and right a click and a, and a close position. But make sure everything is a flat by flatten out everything. This is the best way to do it. So before you close your Ninja Trader, make sure you do not have an open position because sometimes we are, okay, now it's closed, this one here. Because sometimes uh, we all have experienced that. We thought we are flat and maybe you still have one trade in the market. So make sure every single, um, uh, instruments is a flat position so we are done with this one here it is very nice and um, this was a very big trade on the es uh regal uh, on the es stop yeah regal uh, you can if the ES is uh, pulling back, it's going back to this number here, uh, Rigo. So if you want to move your trends, you are on that trade. Okay. So move it, move your trend and stop. If you're hoping for a bigger uh, trend, then hide behind this area here, Rigo. Or if you want to be a little bit more, you put it here on the re-entry and one here, my friend. You are on that trade, aren't you? The ES. How many contract, Rigo? One or two? This is, this is the pullback area on the ES and this is the final you are on two I won't be surprised with you okay you're a happy camper uh, Rigo the the reason I have this one here because the auto trade on the swing trading has a closed position so to play it safe and to protect your profit Rigo keep your eye on the uh, 2926 sir if this market gonna go below that number close position and call it off you are $800 in the trade uh, it is very good so uh, stay on uh, and if the market goes up this is your lucky day this is a thousand dollar trade you're done I'm not surprised you got two on this one. Let me try to find you a reversal, Rigo, just a second. There you go, the, the ES is already overdue, uh, the ES, and I will not, you have the third target, 
for today, those that comes between 11 and 12. But uh, you know what? There is a very strong hold, so I'm not going to be able to give you a reversal on this one. The probability this ES is going to be to 9.30.25. And uh, that is going to cause a lot of sideways on this ES. I would not call that uh, reversal in here. There is a lot of a lot of support area all the way down to the 1625. So as we go in the plain English, you kicked ass with the ES this morning and uh, don't even look at the ES once you are exiting from that trade is over. For now, is over. I don't know what will happen uh, uh, after lunch, but uh, the ES, whoever took those trade in the morning, and actually this ES signal came out exactly when we started the webinar. So whoever took that trade, that's his, um... oh, you are in a storm. Okay, good. <laughs> Okay, well, enjoy the storm. But um, uh, this is uh, is over with the ES. Whoever took that trade earlier is fine. And now what you are uh, you are picking up is crumbs of the table. There is nothing left on the ES. It's done. It's over. So let's see if we can nail that uh, ES to the 29.75 and not to let it go below that 29.25. It looks like you're going to be hitting your target. Your target is 29.75. There we go, Rigo. That's your day. A good day for you to earn $1,000 on a stormy day. There we go. Oh boy. There is a lot of buyers. When you see this one, guys, blinking, that's mean there is a lot of buyers here coming in. But there is nothing you can enter the market here. It's too late, guys. But it seems like we're going to nail the target. The target is... Uh, Twenty nine thirty seventy five. There is nothing left in it. We are four hundred tick on the market analyzer based on the last entry signal. In total, four hundred ticks. Uh, I don't know if uh, you remember also we had a new uh, signal when here in the webinar on the DAX. I, I, I don't trade the DAX during the U.S. session, but it nailed 46 ticks. That's a lot of bananas here on that trade. Okay, you hit your thousand, Rigo. Get the hell out of there. Close. You have a storm. You don't know if you're going to have the internet disconnected or something. You nailed 1,000 on that trade. Call it off, Rigo. I know you are an aggressive trader. Let me know if you close that position, Rigo.
also we had a signal on the Russell and I was surprised why it was short the Russell when uh, the ES and NASDAQ and Dow Jones is long but that signal short on the Russell didn't work and uh, the CL actually we're still struggling on that trade why It looked like Regal, he is in the storm, so he lost connection. I hope he got out.
I'm going to stay quiet for a while because there is nothing to do. We are waiting on a new signal. You know where the new signal, we can follow it. But uh, there is nothing. Uh, I cannot find any trade, guys. Uh, whoever took those early trades took them, but uh, there is no new trades. I'm sorry. Uh, the market uh, is uh, a bit flat. I cannot find anything on the YM, NASDAQ, CL. I cannot find anything tradable. There is all high risk trade. And I don't want to guide you to bad trade. So so we're going to stay quiet a little bit and uh, wait on a new signal. That's all that we can do. For this uh, morning run, we got 418 ticks. And this is not bad. We still struggling on the CL and uh, Russell. They're, they're, they're not doing well. And uh, we'll wait on a, a new signal, uh, whether it's on an ES, NASDAQ, Dow Jones, and we'll follow that signal. Have you noticed, guys, we have always two entries. One, when the market is open, 15 minutes once the market open. Lately, the last week, that's how it is. Then it dies on us, middle of the, around 11 o'clock, it dies on us. And then I start picking up one more trade before lunch, and then it's over. So this is very good. If we can split this market, when the market is open, take the first signals once the market is open, and then whatever we can grab out of it, like uh, the ES, we have not hit the target yet. And uh, strongly advise everyone to close this uh, trade. And then uh, we are waiting on a new signal short trade. So um, now we are waiting on a new signal, that's it. And what is nice about it with this kind of auto trading, uh, you're not dealing with the chop market sideways. This is where most of the traders start losing money when the market get into a chop. So right now we can see this ES is over. Uh, I'm not sure about the NASDAQ because the NASDAQ is going to hold at this area here. The NASDAQ, we have the true average price, 76, 72, 75. I'm not sure this NASDAQ is going to able to, to break this area here. So we're not going to have a, a new signal right away. This is a very strong hold area. So I'm not sure about the NASDAQ is going to generate a new signal right now. And um, so the eyes are on the ES, if this ES able to stay on those level, or if he's going to break it down, that's mean we're going to have a new signal. Very straightforward. That can really filter 75% of your bad trades. You know, and when the signals comes out, let the auto trade take the straight and then you can manage it or we can turn on the fully automated trade and call it off. So we'll see, look, the NASDAQ. This is a very strong hold here, you see? It's going to be a hell of a ride to, to, to break those areas on the NASDAQ. This is coming, look at this. This is your true average price. Uh, 76, 72, 75, look at this. It's to the tick. It's holding and we keep our eye on it. Yes. hold it nothing look look what happened to the nasdaq guys to the tick
nothing we can do, nothing. So there is, this is what is nice uh, that we can spot when there is a trade and where it's not. This is the most important. And um, we just uh, have to sit on the side and uh, get a new entry, that's it. We cannot uh, take any chances. Uh, it is a really critical area. The only thing you can take on that one here is a pullback re-entry on the ES. This is the only area when the ES pullback re-entry is always here. ES, NASDAQ, Dow Jones, CL, whatever. Here is your pullback re-entry. In order for us to get a short trade, we have to be confirming that this ES able to penetrate all those walls. So this is a key area for any instruments, either gonna make it or break it, that's it. Most of the traders, we have 50% their weight on this market pullback and we enter from those areas here. Because those trades here, they are eight out of 10. Look, where is the NASDAQ? At the true average price, look. We need to see that the NASDAQ break that number. It's right in front of you. For the traders is looking at the bars, that's very nice. The bars went up and all this, but this is our level right now on the NASDAQ. Seven, six, seven, two, seventy five. And this is where exactly is holding at that number, exactly, you know. You see that? Same story on the ES is holding those area here. So if we simplify that, once we are at this target, we are at this target. If this market pull back, here is your re-entry. If you are on that trade, you can decide to close it or you let the auto trade to close it. And then you wait on a new signal. This way you skip all those turbulence during the daytime when you have a bad trades. Really, those are simplify the chart to three pieces. Yes, Tony, I'll take your advice. I'm gonna go grab a coffee, I'll be right back, thank you.
Okay, guys, uh, uh, the, the ES is still holding on the same area. And I'm so glad Rigo is back. Uh, the system looks great on the ES. He have the system. And uh, he's in the storm and he's back. So um, if I was you, I will try to exit uh, Rigo at uh, 29, 27. You are in a storm. You don't know if you're going to lose connection or not. So uh, I tried to talk you into uh, close the, the trade when we were up to 1,000. But uh, you got disconnected because of your storm. So now this is another chance you can uh, close Rego at uh, 29.27.50. Uh, the NASDAQ also closed the trade. And um, we're about to have a new uh, signal on the NASDAQ guys. So we will... Um, um, Keep your eye on the NASDAQ. We're about to have a new uh, signal entry on the NASDAQ. And uh, YM, we're still a long way for a new signal. So this is going to put you with $800, Rigo. So that's okay, $850 or $900. You have two contracts, $29, $27 should be okay. Uh, 27.5, yeah, 27.5, yes, yes, sir. Because you have a projection there, I'm not sure we're going to be able to, and uh, we're about to have a new signal, guys, on the NASDAQ. Uh, so should come out very soon a new signal entry on the NASDAQ. Should come out very soon. Too bad, Rigo, because it was a thousand dollar right on the spot, one thousand, and you have those two contracts. You lost the uh, the net over the storm.
Okay, guys, a new entry on the uh, NASDAQ right now, 64. Sixty-four level new signal.
Uh, looked like the signal it changed. But now it's 12 o'clock. We're not going to be. There is a new signal on the NASDAQ, but uh, did not work the last signal. And I'm not sure uh, the market is, uh, is finished for now. And it is lunchtime. Uh, I want to say thank you very much for today. And uh, we'll see you tomorrow at 10 o'clock uh, Eastern time. Uh, thank you very much, and uh, please be careful. There is a lot of it shop today in the market. It's really hard uh, to trade. Thank you for now, and uh, see you tomorrow at 10 o'clock.